let's uh, let's get to this one. Um, let's do. If you guys will tell me, I'm going to do 55 for you. Um, in the problem, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about slant asymptotes. So number 55 um, tells us f of x equals x cubed divided by x squared minus 1. OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through this like your regular homework that you guys had to do. All right? First thing, all of your assignments, number 1 and number 2, you have to find the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes, right? So first thing, let's go ahead and determine this problem. Let's figure out what the vertical, um, let's figure out what the vertical asymptote is. So to find the vertical asymptote, what do we do again? You guys remember? Set, set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Okay. So when we set the factor equal to zero. Hey, plus or minus again, right? Remember when I got so mad at you guys for not doing plus or minus? It's going to kill you in this section if you guys don't do your plus or minuses. All right? It might have only been a small markdown. It's going to be a big markdown on this chapter because if you don't do plus or minus, you eliminate a whole, a whole vertical asymptote. It's plus and minus. So your vertical asymptote, so I'm going to put right here, is x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Okay. I got it? Good. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is now let's do the horizontal. So the horizontal is your test that's in your notes. A, I'm sorry, let's do n is either less than m, n is equal to m, or n is greater than m. Remember where n represents the degree of your numerator and m represents the degree in your denominator. So what do we have? Which one is larger? The top word. So our n is greater than our m. Do you guys remember what the rule is when n was greater than m? You have none. You have no horizontal asymptote. Here, y equaled um, your coefficient divided by your other coefficient. Here, y equaled 0. So our horizontal asymptote does not, we don't exist. We don't have a horizontal asymptote for this problem. So what happens when we don't have a horizontal asymptote? There is still an asymptote that can exist. That asymptote that exists is what we call on a slant or an oblique. So here's the new stuff I'm actually going to be teaching today. Um, so now we need to find how do we determine our slant asymptote. OK. So to determine your slant asymptote, please make sure you guys have this written down for your slant asymptote. So for the slant asymptote, what we're going to do is we're going to use long division. Since this has a smaller degree than this problem, we, it can divide into it. So we're going to write x squared minus 1 divides into x cubed. All right. Now we can't use synthetic division for you synthetic division lovers because this is a um, quadratic. It has a degree power 2, right? You can only use synthetic division when you have a linear factor. So what we have here is now we're going to use synthetic division. x squared, or long division, x squared goes into x cubed, x times, right? x times um, x squared is x cubed. x times negative 1 is negative x. Put it around parentheses, subtract. x cubed minus x cubed, 0. 0 minus x squared is just going to be negative x. Now, does x squared divide into negative x? Um, 0 minus a negative, yeah, it's going to be positive. Thank you. So it's going to become positive. 0 minus a negative, minus a negative, positive. Now, does x squared divide into x? Yeah. But no, no. no, it doesn't factor in there evenly. So that is our de denominator. So we write x over x squared minus 1. All right? Now, um, I don't want to get too much into this because this is more into calculus. But what you guys need to determine is, as like my numbers of x get larger, this number eventually gets, goes to 0. right? Because what's going to get bigger, the denominator or the numerator? Num your denominator, because that's squared. right? So you're going to keep on getting numbers like this. 
one over 10 or whatever, one over 100, one over, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger, so it's actually approaching zero. So when we're finding the slant asymptote, we're not going to evolve ourselves with the remainder because as our numbers get larger and larger and larger, as we go to infinity, this number actually approaches zero. So it's actually not going to affect our slant asymptote and our formulation we needed. So that's why we need to make sure that's a way so we can understand this. So our slant asymptote is just going to be dealing with our quotient minus our remainder. So the slant asymptote is going to be the line y equals x. All right, so what you do is just use long division, find out your quotient, don't worry about the remainder. Just take out your quotient and set it equal to y because it's, it's going to be an equation, y equals x. All right, is everybody following me so far? This is the only thing new. We're slant asymptotes. Can you just use that as the y? Well, let's talk about it now. So let's look at it. So can I erase it? Does everybody have a slant asymptote written down? Okay. So let's look at a graph. All right. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not asking to graph, but I want you guys to understand how the graph is going to look or what it should look like. All right, so our vertical asymptotes are at 0, right? Yep. So we have a vertical, oh, I'm sorry, at 1 and negative 1. OK, 0 and negative 1. Um, Jacob, could you, uh, put that in your, could you put this function in your calculator, please, for me? OK, then uh, we have a slant asymptote that looks like this. y equals x is the graph that's like that, right? That's that line, y equals x. So remember, the definition of asymptote is your function, as it goes to infinity, is going to approach all of these lines. Now, I'm not asking you guys to graph it. However, by using graph calculator, you can see what it does. All I want you guys to do is pick your solution points. All right, Pick solution points that we can see what is the behavior of this graph. So I want you to pick two points to the left. Two points to the right, and we, and then we'll pick two points inside of there. Now, I'm not going to. Uh, I will. I'm not. I don't have time to go and see the math, so I'm going to expect Jake to pull this up so we can quickly look at a table. And then what we'll do is let's just do x y table. So I don't want to go crazy. Let's just do negative two and negative three. Let's do positive two and positive three. So how do you plug out the values? Well. You just create it. So you do f of negative 2 equals negative 2 cubed over negative 2 squared minus 1. So negative 2 cubed is going to be a positive or negative 8. And that's going to be 4 minus, three, 4 minus 1, which would be 3. So you have a negative 8 thirds. Right? OK. Let's do negative 3. So then you do f of negative 3 negative 3 cubed over negative 3 squared minus 1. Well, negative 3 cubed is 27, negative 27, divided by uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8. So you're going to have a negative 27 divided by 8. Right? OK. And then let's do 2 and 3 are going to be the exact same values. But now notice that they're going to just be positive. So this will be an 8 thirds and 27 over 8. OK, now let's kind of look, let's look at the decimal here, um, this. So if we have thirds, so you're going to be 6. So it'd be going there two times with the remainder of 2. So it'd be 2 and 2 thirds, negative 2 and 2 thirds. This would be uh, um, 3 and 3 eighths. Am I right? Follow my work, anyone? I just want to try to get the decimal approximations for these, because yeah. I don't have a calculator. So let's go and plot these two points. So negative 2, so at negative 2, so I go over negative 2, it's negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 and a third. Let's go right there. Then at negative 3, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, it's negative 3 and 7 eighths. Hmm. Or is that going to be, oh, that should be, I guess my line's probably wrong. If it's negative 2, it's going to be like that and that. OK. 
it's going to be below the line negative 2 thirds and negative 3 and 7 eighths. Add over here, add over 2, it's right there. So uh, I'm pretty sure the graph's going to look something like this. That's going to approach two lines. And then um, what were my two terms? Do you have your calculator up there? Let me go and see what they have. Can you pass your calculator real quick? I'll go and look at those. I just want to get this done real quick, show you. So to find my table of values, you could obviously plug in your table and pick your two points. Um, I'm just going to use, I'll just use 0.5, which is negative 0.166. And then, I'm sorry, 0.5. And then negative 0.5, which is a negative 0.166, which the graph looks ends up going like this. OK, so you guys could plug in those values, plug them in, um, and figure it out. But you guys can see that's what the graph's going to look like. OK? Any questions on what I did? Yes, no. Any questions? No. Thank you.